pictured pale skin. He was curious, sometimes suspicious, a voracious reader and a sonic explorer. An obscure guitar pedal was for him another kind of poem. He was our connection to the infamous air of the factory. He had made Edie Sedgwick dance. Andy Warhol whispered in his ear. Lou brought the sensibilities of art and literature into his music. He was our generation's New York poet, championed its misfits as Whitman had championed its working man, and Lorca its persecuted. When Lou died, I was by the sea, and I mourned by the sea. The great big clipper ship that he longed to board, from the lyrics of his masterpiece heroine, I envisioned, I envisioned that ship waiting for him beneath the constellation formed by the souls of the poets he so wished to join. Before I slept, I searched for the significance of the date of his passing, October 27th, and found it to be the birthday of both Dylan Thomas and Sylvia Plath. Lou had chosen the perfect day to set sail, the day of the poets, on a Sunday morning, the world behind him.